In today's video, we're going to assemble a DIY CNC plasma table. Oh yeah! So this E-chain that I've got uh, is uh, completely closed. So I'm having to fish some line through this so I can get the cables for the motor down through it. Hopefully the motor plugs down here will actually pass through that. So while I'm connecting this uh, E-chain to this bracket, I want to kind of go over why I decided to build this thing. Really my purpose was is, you know, do some odd job stuff with the plasma cutter and stuff like that. But the main reason was 
to build bumpers and tabs and stuff for my Jeep. Lost that nut. Perfect. So I've watched a, several videos on YouTube about, you know, DIY CNC plasma cutters. And I thought, figured, you know, hey, I'm a smart guy. I feel like I could make one of those. You know, it might not be the cheapest thing in the world. I honestly don't know how much I've spent on it. I will by the end of this video, though. So if you want to stick around till then. But really, I made it for building bumpers and stuff like that. If you've guys seen in my other videos, you know I made that uh, front winch bumper for the Jeep. Uh, if you haven't seen it, I'll link it up here in the card. Uh, you know, and I spent so much time just cutting out pieces, fitting pieces, making templates and stuff. Um, whereas if I had a machine like this, I could cut I could cut one out in a matter of 10 minutes and have a bumper in, let's say, an hour. That's why I decided to build this thing. Granted, I started building this thing in 2011. It's been around for a while. It's been a long time coming. But eventually, we'll start making parts on it. So if you guys aren't familiar with how CNC plasma cutters work, I'll just kind of go over briefly what they do. So these rails here are two by two, 16 gauge square tube. Um, I bought these green brackets uh, off of eBay from a company called Precision Plasma. Um, it's a do-it-yourself kit. It basically comes with all the hardware and the brackets. You just have to weld these brackets together. And then it mounts, gives you a mount for the motors and everything. These black brackets I had to actually come up with because those don't come with it. But that's no big deal. The switches also come separately. The motors themselves are from a company called CNCNC. Uh, it's just their four axis kit. It's the smaller of their two kits at the time. Uh, but basically, this motor will have a pinion on it, as you can see here. And then there will be a gear that I'm going to glue right to this edge that this motor will run on. So there's a motor on this side and there's a motor on the other side. And that will actually keep this gantry moving parallel. Because if you stop, you know, things kind of wiggle and you'll actually see that in your cut. So this stuff right here is what they call a gear rack. So it's basically the teeth of a gear laid out flat. Uh, this is a six foot piece of it. I think it's like a quarter inch thick. Uh, I, I want to say it's like 14 pitch. But basically that's where this uh, pinion rides for the motor. So what I have to do actually attach this to the tube to where this motor can move on it. And so this this is the tricky part is this stuff is so small I don't think I could tap it for uh, any kind of screw and you know screw it in. So it's basically just has to be bonded to it or stuck to it. Uh, I have some VHB tape that they recommend for this, but before I can stick that on, I want to clean everything up, uh, make sure the surfaces are really clean. I think I'm only going to have one try at this. I just got some isopropyl alcohol I'm going to put on this rag, and we're just going to wipe down this edge. All right, nice and clean. All right, now it's time for this tape.
I just gotta do that to the other side plus the gantry. So I can't put the uh, gantry rack on uh, because I left it at home. So I'll have to come back to that. Pretty much assembled me to hook up the motor drivers and everything and hook up the computer and we can maybe try and move this thing today. think is this one is this motor or it's the other one basically a means it's slave to the other axis and why Probably a good stopping point. Uh, I got everything working. It's taken me eight years to get here, but it's working. It's almost to the point where it's, we can actually cut with it. So uh, I don't know if you guys are interested in anything like this. Uh, I guess let me know in the comments if you want to see more of this. Uh, otherwise, we always got the Cherokee content. All right. Now that we got this machine assembled, let's talk about how much it costs. And before I get to that, I want to kind of go over why I decided to use the parts that I did. Um, basically, I'm more mechanically inclined than I am electrically inclined. So the parts that I decided to pick erred on the fact that it would plug and play. Basically give me a kit that would work right out of the box. So there are cheaper versions of what I've essentially got. You could spend half as much as I did on this easily. But the convenience of being able to plug this thing in and run it was very desirable for me. So the Blade Runner bundle that I bought uh, came with four motors and the controller and software and everything and at the time I think I paid eighteen hundred dollars for it checking their website today you know this is I bought this eight years ago so prices have changed they've offered different things but the package that I bought is similar to the one I found they are selling that for twenty three thirty five right now. And it basically comes with exactly what I bought. You know, four motors, controller, software, and everything to hook it up. 
The next thing is the plasma cutter I got. This Blade Runner system was designed for this plasma cutter, or at least this series, where it has a CPC port on it. The plasma cutter I have is a Hypertherm Power Max 45. And it's a really, it's a great machine. You know, I think it'll edge cut like half inch steel, which is probably more than I'll ever use it for. Wow, so it's pretty powerful. That plasma cutter on Amazon right now is about $2,200. It basically, the Blade Runner kit plugs into the back of it and it'll, it just, it's supposed to work right out of the box. That's probably the bulk of what I've spent on the CNC plasma cutter. Uh, the gantry kit I think was like $200. Uh, I'm finding them on eBay. The gantry kits on eBay are about the same price still. So you got the gantry kit which is $200. The z-axis I got, I think it's like a 5 inch uh, z-axis. Uh, it's got some slides and a ball screw and everything. It's supposed to be super precision. Um, not that I really needed it, but it was easy. Uh, that's about $200. You also need a cheap PC. CN, CNC actually offers PCs now with their software and everything. You know, a custom built machine. And I, I would actually, I would suggest going that route because the older machines you know, run XP. XP is no longer supported by Microsoft, so any issues you have there, you're kind of at your own. So, buying the Blade Runner kit and the PC together just makes sense, you know. I'm figuring those are the main costs of a project like this. You know, your, your electronics, your plasma cutter, your PC, your software, you know, pretty much everything else is you know, you know, a couple hundred bucks or less. So I would estimate this project to be about $4,800 to build your own, which really isn't bad if you can think of, you know, what you can actually do with it. But that's pretty much it. I appreciate you guys for watching, and if you like this content, please subscribe. We'd appreciate it, and we'll catch you on the next one.